Ice up. Ice what? Whoa, whoa, baby. Poke it out. Poke it out. Poke it out. Whoa. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm finally back home. I am going to miss being on vacation, but there was a part of me that did want to be back here, that did want to be sitting in this chair, and that did want to be making these videos again for you guys. I really missed it. Um, a lot of this game wasn't able to be covered. I couldn't do my normal video release schedule because I was in Florida. I was on vacation, and I couldn't do that. But uh, now we're back, and we're going to be hitting the ground running. We're going back to daily uploads. We'll be uploading so much much from here on out and i'm so excited to do it let's go ahead and talk about state of the saints heading into week eight and this is a pretty big week for us we play the chicago bears it's going to be an interesting game and uh yeah let's just go ahead and get straight into it i'm gonna hand this one off to dr nos because we have a bit to talk about as this week's injury report is looking pretty grim all right, guys, as you previously heard from regular NOS, this is a pretty grim injury report. I'm not fucking with it. I do not like it that much at all. There's a lot. There, there's a couple of players here. It, it's not about the number of players that we have on this week's injury report. It is the meaningfulness of the players that are on this week's injury report. So let's go ahead and look at it. The first player we have out is, of course, someone who's been out almost all year now, hasn't played since week one. Our star wide receiver, one of the best wide receivers, if not the best wide receiver in the NFL, Michael Thomas. It started with an ankle injury, um, then he punched a teammate and is out for that, and now he has a hamstring injury and he's battling all of these. He is looking to return week 9 against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but as far as week 8 goes, he will not be playing this week. And I think it's a very smart decision by Sean Payton to rest him until we play that gung-ho superpower team in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers it's going to take us at full strength so not so not risking Michael Thomas here when the Chicago Bears are very vulnerable on the ground is a smart decision in my opinion next player we're missing Marquez Callaway another wide receiver not a good look here of course we, he's going to have to rest because we do play Tampa next week we're just going to really have to rely on the ground game he was our breakout star last week and someone that really looked good uh, sad to see him not here and the next player we have is another wide receiver. Oh, my, we might as well just open up a morgue and stick all of them in it at this point. Our whole wide receiver core is dying. We got Emmanuel Sanders, who's on the COVID list, will be active for the game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's pretty much when we're getting all of our players back. We're not having anybody this week. It is a little bit scary against the defense as good as the Chicago Bears. So look out for that. Three wide receivers out, or three of our best wide receivers out gonna be tough it really is gonna be tough our starting wide receiver core is Traquan Smith at number one Deontay Harris at number two Austin Car Austin Austin Car Austin Carr Austin oh my god he's so shit Austin Carr he's so ass bro if I have to watch Austin Carr play four quarters there's a problem because our number four wide receiver is Juwan Johnson I'd love to see him get more targets I'd love to see him go out on the field I'd love to see him get some Playing time. I haven't seen him get playing time, but he did look impressive in training camp. A non-wide receiver injured player is going to be Nick Easton. He's missing this game, so that's about it for the injury report. All of our, we pretty much should have just called this the New Orleans Saints wide receiver core review, but of course, they're not playing. So thank you guys so much for watching this segment on this channel. Now I'm going to head it back over to Normal Noss. Peace out. Thank you, Dr. Noss. I appreciate your fantastic, professional, and just straight-up amazing uh, insight onto our injury report this week. So let's go ahead and talk about the next segment. Or No, 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 not even that. Let's go ahead and, and just kind of take – what do we think about not having our top three wide receivers? Let's go ahead and talk about that before we talk about anything. So as you heard from Dr. Noss, our, our wide receiver core now consists of Traquan Smith, Deontay Harris, Austin Carr, and Juwan Johnson. This is scary – but it's okay, we do have other weapons. We have other weapons like Jared Cook, who has had a touchdown in both of our last two games. He seems to be finding his footing again, which is a really big leg up on competition because once Jared Cook and Drew Brees get it going, it's pretty nasty. We saw it in games like versus the San Francisco 49ers last year and the Tennessee Titans as well. He can really impact a game. Getting him going against the Chicago Bears is going to be detrimental to if we win or not. He's getting his footing. He's starting to get going. It just took him a few games, just like last year. Jared Cook should be a big part in this game. And of course, 
We have why uh, wi I almost said wide receiver. We got running back Alvin Kamara, who I guess doubles as both, who has been absolutely ridiculously good. He's been fantastic. He's also the highest graded receiver in the entire NFL, including other all other wide receivers in the league like Julio Jones, Keenan Allen, all of those guys. He's ranked the highest with a 92 overall grade. And we also have Latavius Murray, who paired with Alvin Kamara, should have a fantastic game on the ground. The Chicago Bears' run defense is kind of lackluster. It's a bit below average. So getting these two guys going is detrimental and will be the key to winning this game. I promise you guys that right now. I do. So look for that to get going. Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray, we need to take advantage of that. We just, for some reason... Cannot have a normal game. I'm referring to the injury report. We cannot have a normal game. Somebody has to be out. Somebody high profile has to be not on the field for it to be a New Orleans Saints game in 2020. I don't understand it, but I hate it with every piece of passion I have in my body. This shit sucks. It really does. Um, there's always some type of adversity we have to overcome, and this game's just going to be a big one. A big pool of adversity we have to overcome. Michael Thomas and Marquez Calloway and Emmanuel Sanders should be back next week, though. Thank God we're going to need them against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, this is my favorite segment of this series, and we didn't lose this week, or last week, if you guys didn't know. We beat the Carolina Panthers, so the Booty Butt Cheeks Player of the Week has been closed for the third straight week, and we will be moving to Wedding Noss to talk about the Please Be My Husband Players of the Week. So let's go ahead and go talk to him. Oh my goodness. Please be my husband players of the week. It's the most prestigious award. Who is marrying me going into week eight? Well, I got three dudes right here that I am on my knee for. Uh, all right. See, it was supposed to be kind of like funny gay, but that was a little bit gayer than I anticipated. Who I am proposing to. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Drew Brees. The first Please Be My Husband player of the week, Drew Brees. He was fantastic last week. Hell yes, bro. He played with absolute precision and wit last week. It was truly a 2019 slash 2018 performance by Drew Brees. Um, he put up two touchdowns without his top two targets. It was literally a fantastic thing to see. I, this restored so much hope, and he shut a lot of doubters up with this performance. Let's go over his stats. He was 29 for 36, which is absolutely surgical, like seriously, with 287 passing yards and two passing touchdowns. We needed to see a game like this from Drew Brees, and he delivered. Can he do it, though, missing even more weapons than he was missing last week against a better defense? Damn. <laughs> Man, we'll have to see. Number two, please be my husband player of the week. Marquez Callaway. Oh my God, what a game by the rookie, undrafted rookie. Our leading receiver last week was Marquez Callaway. He had 75 yards off of eight receptions. Should have had a touchdown that was taken away from a complete and utter bullshit offensive pass interference call that made me want to shoot myself. He was poised to have another big game this week, but will miss due to another or er, to, an, to an ankle injury. Okay, due to an ankle injury. Sad, but it is what it is. Don't worry though, guys. He will be back and will be a huge piece to this offense moving forward. Seeing how much Drew Brees trusted him during his first start ever in the National Football League was absolutely fucking insane. I couldn't believe it, but I loved every second of it. He trusted him like he was a vet out there, and that's something we need to look for in this dude, Marquez Calloway. He looked amazing, especially because it's a bit hard to gain Drew Brees' trust, and he had it the second he stepped on that field and made that first catch. Awesome game by Marquez Calloway. There's a new number 12 in town. It's almost like we've seen an undrafted wide receiver with a number 12 turn into a superstar before. Huh. Maybe history does repeat itself. Let's move on to the third Please Be My Husband player of the week. And there was a pretty tough time distinguishing who I wanted this to be. I could have been cliche and gave it to Alvin Kamara like every other week. I could have been cool and gave it to Will Lutz because this dude never misses, hasn't missed a single kick this season. But I went ahead and gave it to Marcus Davenport, I mean Marcus Davenport, who had a fantastic sack. 
he didn't have a great game. I mean, he was there. He was applying pressure for the majority of it. But what he did was so just straight up amazing that he earned a spot on this list. Like I said, he had an all-around solid game. But the sack he had at the end of the game won it all for us right there. He knocked the Panthers out of field goal range and put that shit away in the back of his pocket. It was just fantastic. Good sack by Marcus Davenport to end the game. Now, I'm going to hand it back over to regular NOS. Thank you, Slightly Gay and a really, really weird wedding, Noss. We're now going to go over the standings of the NFC South as they're a bit tighter than a lot of people may have thought. Standings. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are leading the NFC South at 5-2, and two, and they play on Monday Night Football. And I know what you're thinking. Monday Night Football? Is it a fantastic matchup? Who are they playing? The Steelers? The Kansas City Chiefs? The New York Giants? Are we, are we serious here? Why? Why is this a possibility on primetime? Why are we wasting hard-working people getting off of work the worst day of the week, Monday, and you're giving them this to watch? It's not going to be close. Tampa Bay, you might as well just call them 6-2. and two. The New Orleans Saints are 4-2 and two versus the Chicago Bears on Sunday without their top three wide receiver targets. Looking a bit rough, but it's okay. We've overcome a lot of adversity. Alvin Kamara, Latavius, let's go. Uh, Panthers, they're third in the division at three and four on a three-two game, three and five, whatever. They, there's something, and they're on like a three-game losing streak after a loss to the Atlanta Falcons. I think they're yeah, they're three and five now. They're on a three-game losing streak. Not a good look for the Carolina Panthers. And the Falcons are two and six after a win somehow versus Carolina. They didn't blow the lead in the final minute of the game it, it's almost like it's it, they broke a paradox they 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 swam out the wormhole they they did something is the curse over for atlanta probably not but i mean they have it this week thank you guys so much for watching let me know down in the comment section below what you think about this division about these injuries about this game whatever it may be the best series on the channel is the state of the saints and i back that wholeheartedly thank you so much for watching and i'll see you boys in the next one adios Zero gravity